Welcome to our lecture online. We managed to fit the next six examples on the, on the whiteboard on the left side of the board. Notice we're now going to do example 5 through 10. And starting with number 5, we have the divergence of a vector, the divergence of A. A is defined over there. So when we come over here, the divergence of A is equal to x times the parcel derivative of x. Uh, with respect to x plus the y unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to y plus the z unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to z operated on the vector a. And so at that point, remember that we're going to end up with a scalar quantity because what we do is we take the partial derivative with respect to x and operate on the x component. So that would be equal to 1. The partial derivative with respect to y on the y component, that's equal to 2. And the partial derivative with respect to z on the third component, 3z, that gives us 3. Added together, that results in a scalar quantity equal to 6. If we now do the cross, uh, not, not the cross, but in this case, we're going to do number 6, which is the curl. We're doing the curl on vector b, which ends up with a vector quantity. When we take the curl, we use the, the matrix format. We put the x, y, and z in the vectors on the first row. The partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and z on the second row. And the components on the vector on which we operate on the third row. And then we use our vector, our uh, matrix uh, operation. We take the first unit vector and then multiply that times the partial derivative with respect to y of this quantity minus the partial derivative with respect to z of this quantity. They both end up being zero. Minus the second unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to x of zero minus the partial derivative with respect to z of 3y. They're both zero again. And finally, we take the z unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to x of minus 2x, which is minus 2, minus the partial derivative with respect to y of 3y, which is 3. So we subtract the 3 from that. So we end up with the minus 5 in the z direction as the result of the curl of vector b. Now we have what we call the vector a multiplied via the dot product with the del operator. So here is vector a from our example, and here's the del operator. So now notice on example 7, we will end up with a scalar quantity, a partial derivative operator, but a scalar operator because we're going to multiply the x, y, and z components times the partial derivative with respect to x, the partial derivative with respect to y, and the partial derivative with respect to z, respectively. So x times this, 2y times this, and 3z times this gives you the result. You still have an operator because now you can operate on another vector or even on a function. It doesn't matter because we end up with a scalar quantity. Example number eight, we have the vector b multiplied times the gradient of a. So make sure that these dots are visible, make them a little thicker right there. All right. So the gradient of a, we did that up here. Here's the gradient of a, we end up with a six. So we're going to multiply the b vector times the gradient of a. So here is the b vector, and we multiply times the gradient of a, which we obtain over here. And that simply means we have the scalar quantity from the gradient, and we multiply times each of the components of the vector, and that's what we end up with. Okay, now when we look at number 9 and number 10, those are kind of interesting or strange operations. Notice we have the dot product between the vector a and the del operator, and then we multiply that times the vector b. So, since this is a dot, dot product operation, we end up with a scalar quantity, but since we're multiplying a vector times a del operator, this will be a scalar operator, which will then operate on the vector and end up with a vector quantity. So, let's take a look over here. So, for number 9, we have a dot the del operator times the vector b. The vector a is given to us right here. So, we have x in the x direction plus 2y in the y direction plus 3z in the z direction and then we we'll multiply that times via the dot product with the del operator so we get the x component x times the partial derivative with respect to x plus the y component 2y times the partial derivative with respect to y plus the z component 3z times the partial derivative with respect to z and that operates then on the vector b which is 3y in the x direction minus 2x in the y direction. Notice when we do that we end up with each one of these terms operating on each component over here. So we operate the partial derivative with respect to x on this component right here, which is going to be 0, and then the partial derivative with respect to x on this component, which is minus 2. Of course, we have to multiply the times the x, so we have minus 2x in the y direction. 
when we take this and we operate on the first one here, we have the partial derivative with respect to y of 3y, which is 3 times 2y gives us minus, uh, gives us plus 6y right here in the x direction. And then operating this on this will give us 0. And of course, the partial derivative with respect to z will give us 0 twice. So we end up with two surviving terms. And we have the x component and the y component. So we write 6y in the x direction minus 2x in the y direction. So that's example number 9. For example number 10, we're doing the same thing, but we reverse the vectors. Here we have vector b and vector a. So here you can see that first we do the dot product between vector b and the del operator, which is going to give us a scalar quantity, but an operator. So we end up multiplying 3y and minus 2x times the x, the y, and the z components of the del operator, which is the partial derivative with respect to x, the partial derivative with respect to y, and the partial derivative with respect to z. The components of the b vector is 3y and minus 2x. You can see it up in the upper right corner there. Then we operate that onto the a vector, which is x, 2y, and 3z in the x, y, and z direction. Again, each one of these operates on every one of the terms, so we end up with the partial derivative with respect to x here gives us a 1 times 3y, which is 3y. And the partial derivative with respect to x of these two terms goes to 0. Then the partial derivative with respect to y of the first term goes to 0. But on the second term, we get 2, and we multiply it times minus 2x, which gives us a minus 4x. And then, of course, when you take the partial derivative with respect to z of each of these, you end up with, whoa, no, let's take a look here. Oh, yes, you would get something, except there's a zero in front of it. So because of the zero, you don't get anything. So those three terms disappear. And you end up with the two surviving terms, 3y in the x direction and minus 4x in the y direction. So there you have some good examples of all the various types of operations with vectors, the curl, the diversions, and the gradient, as well as the cross product and the dot product. And so there you go. Those, that's a good summary to help you figure out what to do when you end up with something like that. And that is how it's done.